Hey everyone, it's Chris here from Everyday Survival Gear, and today we're just going to do a quick, in quotation, quick because it's never quick, uh, review and teardown of this uh, aluminium rechargeable bike light that I picked up locally. Um, it's pretty unique and special, so I thought I'd do a teardown on it. Uh, you guys might enjoy it, I know I enjoyed it. Um, it's the first time I've ever actually seen a setup like this. Um, so first of all, we'll run over the specs. It's missing the front, which had most of the specs on it. It didn't really come with a... Um, piece of paper inside so it's a Ega, Egi or whatever they pr pronounce it I can't actually find their website I can only find the reseller who they sell through so the um, basic modes are and specs we'll read through here so you can see four modes high beam low beam uh, fast flashing and slow flashing beam distance up to 50 meters when fully charged uh, inbuilt 3.7 volt lithium rechargeable battery, direct USB charge, no cable required, silicon bracket holder, uh, wide lighting angle, 220 lumens output max. So yeah, that's all the uh, basic specs there. So we'll take it apart now. So what makes this thing so cool and unique? Well, first of all, it's pretty small and compact. Um, and the main thing that I really like about this light is the reflector. Look at that. Not sure how well you guys can see that, but the reflector actually sits up the top and it's mounted up the, up the top there and the light reflects here, which gives it a really, really cool cutoff. So basically, if you're in a car um, and if you've got one of these these um, bikes bikes behind you that's using one of, one of these lights, uh, you're not going to get blinded. So to me, that's pretty cool. Um, it connects to the bike through like this plastic bracket rubber. It's nothing special there, um, which is also uh, connected through a screw here. <coughs> the light isn't all perfect because underneath that screw is actually a lipo cell. So obviously that's not too good to have a screw there, but it is a uh, flat screw. It's not a self-tapping screw, so um, you shouldn't really puncture that cell. It'll move before you puncture it. Um, as the uh, piece of paper said, it is USB rechargeable. Um, I only paid $4 for this light, so I actually got a pretty good bargain because the LiPo itself would cost me like 3 4 bucks on the internet anyway, so even if I parted it out, I'll be winning. So this is freaking cool, right? Look at that. That's a new USB. No need for cables. No cables, no worries. Let's plug it straight in. And you can see it's charging. That's awesome, right? I guess that kind of like eliminates um, some of the need for a, I don't know, like kind of if you're riding a bike, then you got to carry less, you can just take this out, but you still need a uh, DC adapter uh, to plug the USB into, obviously, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Like at least you don't have to carry around a cable and then plug it into a micro USB port or whatnot. Uh, this does kind of save that in that aspect. Um, so yeah, um, this is, doesn't really seem waterproof or nothing. Um, it doesn't proclaim to be waterproof because there's no actual, like, seal or o-ring there. But it does clip on pretty well. Oh. 20 minutes wasted trying to get it clipped in. So it does actually clip in and sound like it clips in pretty good. This camera isn't focusing very good. I might put it on manual focus mode, I think. Alright guys, we are back. I changed it to manual focus. And I also changed the uh, white balance exposure, so it does look a little bit better in here now. I've actually got a uh, halogen lamp that's very long uh, above us, um, and it should spread out the light, but it's just not very bright in one spot, but I kind of like that better. It looks a little bit dull here now, but... Uh, so, we'll take it apart. Um, it's pretty easy to get apart, actually. It's not built, like, the best. So, if you pull the uh, front lens, the lens is only plastic. But that's okay. Then we'll take it apart. And um, so this is the reflector setup here. It does actually come out of this plastic lens part, but I'll have to pry it out. Yeah. It's kind of got a little side part there. There we go. So this is the actual re reflector here. So, as you can see, I know it's going to be hard to show you guys because the light is right above us, but the LED sits up the top here, and the light kind of shines inside, and then it bounces off. So we're going to take this outside, 
and I'll show you guys when we um, go outside. It looks friggin' awesome. Like, the tint is pretty crap, but the um, beam profile itself is something that you would never see from a torch. It looks friggin' cool as... So yeah, as I was saying, plastic, it just clips in like so. Um, also, not the best mounting option for the LED itself. Um, the LED is just pushed up against this uh, al al aluminium body. Um, depending on how tight it's pushed uh, will depend on heat dissipation. But because it's only putting out 220 lumens, it doesn't really matter uh, too much. It's actually using a, a real Cree XP G2. Um, one of the latest new bins too, so that's good. You don't usually see that here and we can pull out the button actually we can pull out the whole thing Let's see if I can give it a little push so that's the lipo cell there um, 800 milliamps so it's a pretty pretty good size not too bad but not too good at 220 lumens that should put it put out about maybe on 220 lumens at, at least an hour somewhere around about there okay so Cree XPG2 in cold white that's the lipo here um, this is all basically just the charging circuitry will be this side here um, end up here will be the uh, circuitry to control the LED uh, these resistors will control the output and that will be the uh, main chip there to control the modes and that's the main chip to control the um charging cycle of the lipo um and on this side we just have the switch with a blue led um that's only on when you turn it on but whoops let me try and cover this guys oh it's getting hot bad idea <laughs> yes that wasn't such a smart idea on my behalf there was it uh the switch did have some other cover on it but that did come off one time when I took it apart to check it out so uh, it kind of snapped um, so it should have a little bit more tactile feel than what it actually has um, the XPG2 is actually on a custom board I'm not sure why they put it on a board like this I guess it makes more sense because of the shape of the light so it's pretty cool to see it on a board like this uh, al aluminium board um, and then so the LED just sits inside like this So the LED sits inside the uh, actual reflector like so, so it sits on top. So we're going to go outside and uh, check out how it runs now anyway. But um, if I turn it on for a sec, this will be a little bit better now. So you can see it's got a uh, blue LED there, which is actually super, super bright. It's only a uh, SMD LED, but yeah. Um, and that's the beam profile there, so it's now getting really hot. So it does output quite a lot of power, actually. actually. Although it's only 220 lumens, um, it does output quite a bit of power. Come on, focus. Well, quite a bit of light, I should say, at 220 lumens. Although it doesn't sound like much, I guess, like, for its application, it is actually pretty good. Because car headlights are only doing, like... 1100 2000 lumens max so it's not too bad overall so i'll put this uh, all back together we'll have one quick last look at the at the reflector the reflector is plastic but um that is to be expected this manual focus really helps a lot that's the reflector there uh, and it sits inside like so in the plastic uh, lens part i'm not sure which way it goes might go like this, or might go the other way. Actually, it goes like this way because you can see it's got a little guide there, and the guide keeps the reflector straight, and then the reflector locks in. And then when we put it back in, we kind of got to like stack this like so, that up the top, and then the uh, LED sits in. Uh, the actual body itself is a uh, aluminium alloy. Um, it is pretty thick and it is pretty well built. There's no sharp edges. Or nothing on it the only thing i'll do to improve it is i'll put something over here just to keep the lipo safe um the actual rubber boot itself on the uh, switch is pretty well built it will keep out water so it does have like grommets there extra parts so it will keep out water um i guess like it doesn't really matter too much if water gets on the usb part uh 
a tiny tad, but it shouldn't get inside from there because it is a pretty tight, it is a pretty tight tolerance. But you can't be really sure because there's no O-ring around here. Also, it's a bit hard to tell the water will get in. It depends. It does have the cutout here, but so maybe it'll be fine. Actually, I'm not sure. I'd have to test that. Now uh, we'll take it outside now and see how it goes. All right, guys. So now we're outside. Um, don't mind the grass. It's been raining here for like two and a half weeks straight, uh, which is pretty good because we've been in a drought for like eight months or something. So yeah, in like two weeks, the grass grew this much. So if you look at my last video, there was like no grass here at all, which for winter is pretty weird. It usually actually gets pretty grassy here. Um, so yeah, I'm basically only here to show you guys the uh, beam profile. So you can see it. It's a bit weird, but it kind of works. So I'm holding the light straight and you can see that no light actually goes up the top. So if I hold the light in front of you guys, so you can see the blue LED there, it is pretty bright. Um, so if I hold the light like this, straight even, you can see the cutoff. So the cutoff's there. So basically like you don't blind people inside the car, I guess, which is pretty awesome. It's a very well thought out light. Um, it's not very often that you see a light that will have like a reflected the, the, the uh, reflected design like this, so it's cool. Hmm, it's quite nice, and you know, like it's got more than enough light. Not sure how well you guys can see it, but it's lighting up the backyard pretty good. Um, the beam is pretty wide; it does go all the way to the shed and all the way to the other side. But the main beam is in front of you, which is pretty much what you want. You know, when you're riding a pushy, you pretty much want to be able to see in front in front in front of you. Um, this is the high mode, so 220 lumens. We'll go to the low mode now. Um, inside the low mode, we're showing PWM, but outside you can't really see it. So if we look in front of us, so within like, let's just say it's about 15 odd meters to the fence, 20 meters in some part. So you can see like it does do a pretty good job, even on low mode of lighting up the uh, road. I'm sure the road is a different color, so we will probably absorb a, a, a bit more light, but yeah. Um, then we'll go to a flashy, so not sure why you'd put this mode on if you're trying to ride. Um, if you're using it as a rear light, yeah, sure. Um, this could come in handy to look behind you, but not sh too sure if you'd actually use that mode too often. Um, maybe if you're riding in the daytime and you want to have it on, it might kind of uh, show people that they can see you kind of thing. I'm not sure. So yeah, uh, all in all, it's a pretty cool light. Like I scored it for four bucks from my local hardware shop, uh, Bunnings. So it was a pretty good buy, you know, even an XPG2 by itself um, without the base is like three bucks probably. So yeah, I'm pretty happy. So you can see how wide the reflector is at the front here. So yeah, that's pretty much why I wanted to show you guys this light was because the reflector is different. It's not just a normal shape and plus like who doesn't love beam shots everyone does all right guys this has been chris from everyday survival gear bringing you the uh tear down off this bike light uh edigi Igi, i don't know whatever we'll put it in for front of us um i hope you enjoyed the video i know the videos have been a bit lacking lately but I'm trying to get on it. Just as soon as this rain stops, I'll finish building my uh, bench and um, we'll get back in the shed. Uh, as always, um, like and subscribe and thanks for watching, guys.